Hi everybody, it's attorney Brooke Goff, live from my West Hartford office. Today we're gonna do Workers' Compensation 101. I do these videos every couple weeks just because I really think it's important you understand what you're facing if you're hurt at work and what the path looks like, right, moving forward. Um, firstly, if you are hurt at work, you need this, right? This is 2019, fine, we're into 2020, okay. But this is the, the Bible of workers' comp. You can go into your local, well, pre-COVID, workers' comp office and get one, all right? Now there's 200 and something pages, let's say 253 pages. You're likely gonna get through uh, maybe 30. If For the overachievers, you may get through 30. And then you're gonna be like, what am I doing? I don't understand this, I need a lawyer. And guys, here's the thing. If you hire a lawyer that doesn't know comp, they might get through 30 pages too and say, what am I doing? Why am I trying to do this? This is workers comp 101, right? Um, you're hurt at work. The obvious things are when you're hurt, get medical treatment, okay? Don't worry about what's gonna happen, I'm gonna lose my job. That should be the furthest from your mind at that point. Get medical treatment, done, okay, done. If you hurt your back, your neck, whatever, you're not a doctor, you don't know that you're gonna wake up tomorrow and have it be better, and guess what? If you just, if you tweak your back and it's like really out and you're like, okay, I'll take some ad, but when I get home, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna split any hairs or, you know, make anybody upset, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna go home, you're gonna feel like crap, you're gonna feel worse the next day, you're not even gonna be able to, gonna be able to go into work, and guess what's gonna happen to you? The, comp can, the workers' comp insurance can be like, well, he never reported it. We don't think it happened. There's conveniently no cameras where you're hurt. There's conveniently no witnesses. And I don't care if you've worked there 30 years, they don't care, okay? This is my life, guys. This is the life I live. I deal with comp all day, every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can ask any of my clients. You can ask anybody that knows me. I'm always working. This is what we do, all right? We obviously also do personal injury workers' comp. Um, the two together go, okay? So you really, if you have a comp case and there's a personal injury component to it, car accident, slip and fall, whatever the case might be, okay? You need an attorney that does both. They need to be able to settle both because they go parallel. Uh, there's this weird thing out and about these days where um, some attorneys are taking on the personal injury case and they say, wait on the comp case. I don't know why, because personal injury is sexier to some people than comp. So they take on the personal injury case, they work it up, and then you lose benefits on the comp case. By the time you find that out, it's too late. The personal injury attorney settles your case for a fraction of the value. Comp takes all their money back and it's a nightmare. Guys, get the same attorney for the personal injury case as well as the comp case. They go hand in hand, okay? All right, so with all that said, let's, let's talk about this book, right? So this book has all the rules, statutes, regulations, all this other good stuff, but it also has pictures of the forms, okay? So if you're hurt at work, let me just give you a couple pointers. Report, report it, okay? That you're not, it's not a secret, report it. If somebody fires you for getting hurt at work, they will it's very rare, guys. I can't say I haven't seen it, but it's rare. Um, you're going to bring out a 98 claim, and you're going to basically like bring a claim saying, I was wrongfully terminated because I was hurt. Now they have a whole other slew of problems. So think you have to put you first, you before the job, okay? Always. Especially if you're hurt because you don't know what's wrong with you. Um, Report it to your employer, your supervisor, whatever. Now here's the deal, if they don't give you something written, don't be weird about it or crazy about it, but report it. Make sure you write down who you reported it to and when you reported it, fine. Um, you don't have to, if you get really hurt and you have to get to a hospital right away, fine. You're gonna, you're gonna obviously call the medical professionals, 911, I fell, I was hurt, whatever, I was in an accident, working, whatever, and they're gonna take care of that. Let's say you need a surgery. Okay, you get surgery that night, it's an emergency surgery. Guys, I'm sure your employer will likely know if it's that serious, but if they don't report it the next day, it's not a big deal. But if you are, if it's a situation where you can report it right then and there, report it. Give your employer a heads up so they can notify their insurance. You want their insurance on board ASAP because their insurance is gonna be who's paying you if you're out of work, okay? All right, so now you've gotten out of the hospital, you're feeling semi better. Um, you've called me, right? Um, my, my hopes are. In the event that you haven't though, and you're like trying to figure out and get your get your marbles about you, what do you do? The first form that has to be filed, it's gonna be backwards, sorry, is a 30C, that one, right? You can find these forms on Workers' Compensation website. Uh, you can either save it to your favorites tab, 
which I've never done. <laughs> or you can just type in workers' comp CT and then you can pull up the forms. We have them saved here, so I don't go on the site often, but once in a while I have to go on. Um, 30C is your notice of claim. This is how you open the case officially with workers' compensation. So there's two things I'm, I'm referring to. Workers' compensation, guys, is the body that overlooks workers' comp in the state of Connecticut, okay? Then you have comp insurance. They don't work for workers' comp, guys. That's who represents your employer. That's your employer's insurance. People intertwine these, and that's dangerous. Do not intertwine them, okay? Workers' compensation is workers' compensation. That's the body that oversees everything, the legislative body. Then you have um, you have uh, the workers' comp insurance. This could be anybody, Gallagher Bassett, Liberty Mutual, CNA, whoever, okay? So don't intertwine the two. Just because you get a claim number from your, comp in, your employer's comp insurance doesn't mean the case has been open. It's not open until a first report of injury is filed, which is filed by the employer, or until you file one of these. Now, you have a duty to file this form within a year. COVID, the regulations have been suspended, whatever, file, file the thing in a year, guys, right? You gotta send it certified to the employer and to the Workers' Comp Commission. Let's give you an example. Jane Smith lives in Middletown, Connecticut. She works all the way in Norwich. I know, she's a teacher and she travels and that's crazy commute, but that's what she likes to do, okay? She thinks a lot in the car and she drinks a lot of coffee, I don't know. Um, so uh, Jane would wanna file this in Middletown, guys, right? So if there's ever a hearing, you don't wanna be going to Norwich to attend a hearing. And, and the big thing here too, guys, is let's just say the employer lets her go or she can't return her job or whatever. Now she's schlepping all the way to Norwich. Don't do it. File this, certified mail, guys, it's gotta be certified. Certified mail, a little green card, all right? It's gotta be sent to your employer and workers' comp within a year. If it is not, you risk your case never being able to be brought, all right? Uh, there are exceptions to that, but I'm not gonna tell you about them. File the form. In the first 30 days, you're good, right? Um, yeah, you go in, if you hire an attorney, they're gonna file the form. It's a legal document, so I recommend always that you have uh, an attorney file this for you. I'm confident uh, anybody that sees this video after this video, if you're hurt at work, you're gonna hire a lawyer because I'm gonna educate you, something that most lawyers don't take the time to do, okay? That's your 30C form. Now, the employer is likely gonna file something called a Form 43. I'm trying to find you a copy of that. Oh, I don't know that's in the book. It's interesting. Oh, they probably don't want, um, they don't want to scare away the, uh, the claimants, I'm sure. Let me just confirm it's not in here. It's interesting. Uh, so for, oh no, here it is. It is, they, they don't, they will scare you away. Here it is, form 43. I know it's backwards. You're going to get this in the mail certified, okay? Guys, let me give you a little pointer with workers' comp. If it comes certified, they're trying to uh, make a record. If they're trying to make a record, they're trying to do something. Open it. Don't throw it in a pile. Don't throw it in the garbage. Don't be scared of it. It's not, a, these are fire forms. Form 43, they're contesting your claim. Now under a case, I'm not gonna get into it too much, says they have to file this form. And it's really, the case is way outdated and it needs to be fixed. And now that COVID's here, it's probably never gonna be fixed. But um, the case says they have to deny the claim net within a certain 20 days of the 30C being filed or they forever lose their right to contest your claim. So they do it, all right? So let me give you an example. Let's say you file your 30C, you're in with your employer, really good relationship. Let's say, I don't know, you fell, you fell at work and broke your ankle, okay? Well, let's say I, you file your 30C, that 28 days passes. Six months later, uh, the employer starts getting in some medical records and in there says, uh, we'll say, poor Jane, we'll use Jane again. Jane Smith was actually at a party, um, I don't know, the day before and went to the hospital. Are you ready? What was her injury, guys? She thought she broke her ankle, right? So she hobbled into work that next morning. She really did fall, but she felt she already broke her ankle. And uh, now she's screwed. She's, she's got the ankle fracture. If the employer did not file that 43, they are screwed. They buy the ankle. They don't, we don't care. So guys, this is why they file it, but it's a fire form. And more 43s get clients to call me than anything because you guys get scared because you say they're denying my claim. That is right. You have to object when well, you should object and you're gonna have a hearing. Um, you're next gonna file a 1A form, okay? So a 1A form, we need this form filled out correctly. Again, another legal document, guys, another lawyer thing that should be being done. But if you insist on doing it yourself, I don't recommend it. Here's your 1A form. This form goes through your filing status and exemptions. This is how we calculate what your comp rate should be. This is the start. Employee information, comp number, date of injury, okay? I always say send a, a, a copy of this to the adjuster and to workers' comp too. As a self rep client, again, I don't recommend it, get a lawyer, you should always copy comp on everything you send the insurance company. That way, right, any forms that way, 
Everybody's honest, right? Well, you hope. Um, so this form, you fill out how you file, single, head of household, married filing, jointly married filing, separately. If you have any exemptions, one, two, three, four, five kids, whatever it is, um, then you put in their names, date of births, or relationships. The most important part of this form that people overlook is the concurrent employment. Guys, if you're hurt at work, let's say you work at McDonald's and you fall and you hurt your back, but guess what? You leave McDonald's every day and you go to Dunkin' Donuts to close up. We can we include both comp rates, guys. You can also get paid for your Dunkin' Donuts rate from McDonald's. So uh, from the McDonald's employer through the second injury fund. It's kind of complicated, but that's concurrent employment. If you have a second job, I don't care if you're a mail carrier. I don't care if you're... Um, Delivery person, I don't care what it is, you fill this out. This is called concurrent employment, okay? If you don't fill this out, your comp rate will be wrong and you'll be short thousands of dollars, likely. Uh, then you sign this, you send it in, right? 1A form, good? Now, let's say you're treat. you get to, oh, and by the way, guys, you get to pick your doctor, unless you work for a certain, uh, a certain uh, company, like a bigger company, there's only a few, so I'm not even gonna say who they are. Uh, they have a network you can pick out of, which the networks are still pretty liberal. There's still a lot of people on there. You get to pick your doctor, right? No, you don't need to stay with Concentra. No, you don't need to stay with Oc Health, and I don't recommend it. You get to pick your doctor. Let me repeat, you get to pick your doctor. If they tell you you cannot, they're lying to you, okay? You get to pick your physician. Certain employers have a list, but only very few in Connecticut that you can choose from, which is still liberal. So your choice, right? You get to choose your doctor. So guys, don't let these people push you around and tell you you can, tell you have to go to their doctor, um, because the doctor they send you to, they have a relationship with, right? Like, how does that make you feel? Their job is to get you back to work as soon as possible. So pick your doctor. So let's say you're working with this doctor that you picked, and you're working with them, I don't know for how long. Um, for four months and the doctor puts you back on what we call uh, light duty. So you've been out of work, that's TT benefits, temporary total, your highest cop rate will be on the temporary total benefits, right? Then you, they move that out of the way, so your temporary total, now you, they're applying for you to go to TP benefits, temporary partial. Doctor says you can work light duty, right? So they're gonna file, you need another certified letter guys, all right? They're gonna file something called a form 36. This is a fire form too, right? There you go. You must object, must object to this form 36 within 15 days. If you do not, guess what? They automatically approve them, guys. And then your benefits can go down if you have a different temporary partial benefit from temporary total, head spinning yet, I'm sure, right? It, or they can just stop your benefits altogether, right? These forms are dangerous, serious legal documents. You gotta object. How do you object? Well, is there a hearing request form in here? I don't know. Let's find out. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Oh, there it is. There you go, see, wrong. All right, hearing requests, there it is. You gotta use the comp hearing request. Don't write comp a letter, I can read it, right? You gotta do a hearing request, fill out the forms. This is a game of, uh, I almost said thrones. This is a game of forms, okay? So fill out the hearing request form, send it, certi uh, certify it being, put a certification page on the back, say, and you gotta send a copy of it to the employer and to workers comp where your case is pending, okay? They will put it down for a hearing. You will get a notice that there's a hearing scheduled. If you do not attend the hearing, you're in trouble. Um, but by the time you get here, guys, I really, I pray, I hope that you've hired a lawyer. Look, I can sit here and sell myself all day long. I sell myself through my education, through my knowledge, okay? I don't sell myself by telling you I'm the best lawyer in the world. I, my, many of my clients will tell you that they've had very good experiences with my office, but I, um, I advertise very differently as most of you realize. I don't go on TV and tell everybody how great I am. I go on TV and I educate. So you guys can decide whether or not you think I'm great and that you wanna hire me, right? So uh, hopefully by now you've hired a lawyer. I, I, hopefully I've scared you away. But if I haven't, by now, by the time you get that 36, you will probably be scared away. Now let's go back to your comp rate for a minute. So we talked about the 1A form, right? The one where you fill out the exemptions, your concurrent employment. We talked about all that. Then we talked about um, the 30C form. So now that you've done your filing status exemption, um, you can actually utilize that to calculate your comp rate if you have a pen and probably four pieces of paper and probably a good glass of wine, maybe a bottle, uh, because that's how frustrating it is to calculate the, the comp rates. We have a system called Comp Tools. If you're looking to hire a comp attorney, you just go in their office and say, do you have comp tools? If they look at you like they have no idea what you're talking about, you should run. Any, any real serious workers comp firm has comp tools. If they say, no, we don't have it, well, how much are they investing in their firm? Comp tools isn't cheap, but it's invaluable. 
when you are dealing with workers' comp, okay? So I would plug the information from this here. You're gonna request from the adjuster your 52-week wage history. They're gonna jerk you around for a while. They never gonna wanna give it to you. And then guess what? You're gonna request a hearing on that hearing request form. You're gonna say um, in, uh, indemnity history is what you'll put. And again, the commission will send it, will we'll schedule a hearing, instruct the insurance company to send you the indemnity history. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, guys, this is the kind of games they play with you when you represent yourself, okay? But let's just say, you get it. You take the, it's the average of the 52 week wages, then it's a certain percentage of that. So, and if you have certain outliers, so if you have, uh, let's say out of 52 weeks, 50 you had, you made $1,500 a week and then you had zero and zero because you had unpaid, holiday, unpaid vacation. I would probably fight to have those removed because those are gonna way cut down your average comp rate. Again, lawyer stuff guys, not people to represent themselves stuff. All right, so you take so that so then you calculate your your uh, wage rate. We figure out what it is. Those are what your checks are. Then you demand them to send you a jurisdictional voluntary agreement. This is green. It's going to be four pages. Um, if we've you've confirmed, this is dangerous, guys. I don't recommend people do this on their own. I recommend you have a lawyer to doing this for you. Um, if you because once this is good for you because the case is accepted once this is done, but it's also set that your comp rate is what it is. Be careful how your heads are should if your heads aren't spinning there's a problem at this point guys right uh, all right so then let's say your doctor puts you back light duty what do you do we well, have to do I'm seeing if those are in here I don't know if those are in here either but now that I've said that I'm sure I'll find it light duty work no they aren't uh, light duty work search forms and those can be found on the workers compensation website you have to do five a week now with COVID those have been uh, suspended but normally, and that's what I'm gonna talk normal, because I mean, we're all gonna pretend like COVID's not here, because we hate it. Um, the, these, um, these forms have to be done weekly and fact standard, you don't get paid, right? This is if your employer can't accommodate your restrictions. Let's say a year goes by, uh, the employer says you can't go back to work, and here's your final rating. Your employer's gonna give you, well, you're gonna give the, uh, excuse me, the doctor says you can't go back to work, and the doctor gives you a final rating, says you're at maximum medical improvement. Those are scary words, because that means the, your benefits start tick, tick, ticking away, all right? This is called the Form 42. This is what your doctor fills out, rating the body part. Once the, the doctor uses the word maximum medical improvement, workers' comp is gonna file another, again, comp insurance is gonna file another, 36, that fire form certified. They're gonna say, we wanna move this person to PPD benefits. We want our benefit, because so far, if they've been paying you TP and TT, guess what? Your benefits are endless, right? They want to move you to PPD so that the benefits start ticking out. Back, let's say it's your back, you got 37.4 weeks. That's it. So after 37.4 weeks, gig's over, all right? Done. Even if you can't return to work, you can get some 308A benefits, which is another conversation, but the gig is up, okay? After those 37.4 weeks, checks, stop. Again, you might be able to get a little 308A, but it's still not gonna fix the problem, okay? So this 36 is most dangerous. The, the commissioner will approve it at the date of receipt. Remember, you have 15 days to object, guys, 15 days. If you don't, it's administratively approved. That's a problem for you, all right? Um, so now what? Well, if you can return to work, great, you're back to work. Now you're gonna be getting checks in for 30, well, if it's a back, that's 10%, 37.4 weeks. Your insurance, the insurance company for the employer can contest this and send you to a commissioner's exam um, if they choose and then have their doctor opine as to whether, what the rating is and if they agree with the other person. But in most cases, they will accept the rating as long as it's not astronomically high. Um, this is the perfect time to settle. Now, if you're back to work and you're not going to leave work, this is the end of the pretty much the comp road for now until you decide to leave whereby you can try to settle. But if um, if you are not going back, you don't want to go back, the gigs up, whatever, this is the perfect time to settle, okay? So you take that rating, the leverage is in your hands, you, uh, what you do is you take the rating and then you fill that in, you do the 308A and you do a demand and you send it in and hope that they want to settle. But there's no requirement to settle a workers' comp guy, so they can choose to pay you out the 37.4 weeks and move along. They can do that. That's like they're going to, but they can't. Again, most of the time insurance companies do not take you serious at this stage until you have a lawyer. But here's the crappy part, right? Let's say you've done everything on your own to, the, to now. You hire me at that point. You've done all the work, but you're still giving me the same 20% contingency fee, right? Why are you gonna do that? Why are you not gonna let me just do the work all along? I prefer to do it all along, actually, because then I don't have to fix things toward the end. Let me just do it from the beginning, all right? So, um, if you settle your case of workers' compensation in Connecticut, they will pay for two years of qualified education around your restrictions for you. 
You want to be a phlebotomist, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a massage therapist, you want to be a HVAC, you want to be an electrician, I don't care what you want to do, they will pay for two years of education for you to attend a qualified school around your restrictions. That's right, so two years. So that's another benefit with selling your case. Guys, I would say 80% of cases that commission, the, excuse me, the insurance companies want to sell, all right? So you get it all the way to this point, and I've left out tons to this time, and then you try to settle it. You put together the demand, you submit it. How do you know what to put in a demand, guys, if you don't do this for a living? I don't know how you guys do it. Some people just will kind of do one of these and be like, I'll take 50 grand. They come in my office and they're like, Brooke, I demanded this. And I'm like, what are you doing? Your case is worth 250. So guys, again, don't do this by yourself. You're leaving benefits on the table. One other thing you should know, mileage. You get paid for your mileage in Connecticut, okay? I think it's 57 and a half cents a mile or something like this. You get paid for mileage, take the mileage, you get it, get it. You gotta submit it to the insurance. There's mileage forms online and then you're good to go, all right? All right, so that's 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 my, that's my spiel for today. Um, I'm happy to talk to you further if you so choose. I'm happy to do, you know, to assist you guys in whatever way possible I can. You can call our office if you want a free consultation with us, 203-399-0000, extension one. You can email us, uh, brooke at golflawgroup.net, B-R-O-O-K-E at golflawgroup.net. But call us, get to know us a little bit, talk to us. See, see, see if I'm just like a talking head for all you know, right? So call us. Um, again, you'll get one of our attorneys, you'll get me sometimes, you'll get one of our attorneys. Um, and we'll talk to you, we'll go into depth just like this with you. We'll meet with you, um, we'll do whatever it takes so you feel comfortable and then you can make an educated decision. Because right now sitting here guys, if you've learned something in this meeting, you're not making educated decisions. You have to be fully educated to make them, all right? And that would mean you would have to have this knowledge to make them. So imagine all the other things I haven't covered. Call us today, free consultation, I'd be happy to help. And share this on your timelines because you never know which one of your friends may um, get hurt at work or may have a friend that was hurt at work and this 15 minutes could be the difference between them getting, you know, n not anywhere near their benefit amount or getting what they're entitled to fully. Thanks guys, take it easy and uh, stay safe during COVID. Appreciate it guys, thanks.